Watch on to see 11 strict rules Powerball winners have to follow. Number 11. Don't lose your ticket. Maybe this one's obvious, but if you have a winning Powerball ticket, hold on to it. For big jackpots, you're going to have to bring that ticket in person to your state lottery commission if you want to collect. They don't keep track of who bought what ticket. If your dog eats it or it falls into a black hole, you are 100% out of luck. And if someone steals it, well, did you sign it? Because if you didn't, the person who stole it might just say it's theirs. That might be what happened with the $2 billion Powerball jackpot at the beginning of 2023. On Valentine's Day, a man named Edwin Castro handed in the winning ticket and took the lump sum payout of just under $1 billion. But now another guy named Jose Rivera claims that he's the one who should get the jackpot. Rivera says he bought the winning ticket from a service station, but then a guy named Reggie stole it from him. Did it really happen? Unknown. How did the ticket get from Reggie to Edwin Castro? Unclear. But the California Lotto stepped up to say if any crime was committed, that's none of their business. They just know Castro's the guy who handed in the ticket. So he's the winner. So sign your ticket and keep it safe. Then make your first big decision. Number 10. Pick your poison. Lump sum or annuity. You have to choose between getting your money all at once or getting regular payments over 30 years. That's a tougher choice than it sounds like, because either way, you're not going to get the whole value of the jackpot. Buckle up. Say you want a $10 million jackpot. Do you take the lump sum payment or the annuity? If you take all your money now, they don't give you $10 million. The lump sum payout is usually just 61% of the jackpot. That's right, if you want it now, they're keeping 39% right off the top. A $10 million jackpot turns into a $6.1 million jackpot. So maybe you settle for annuity payments over 30 years. That way, you get every dollar of the jackpot, but most of it will come 10, 20, or 30 years from now. Inflation is going to mean that that money will be worth a lot less when you get it than it is today. Consider this, inflation has made the dollar worth almost exactly half of what it was 30 years ago. So you should expect a similar hit to the purchasing power of a payment you get 30 years in the future. The Lottery Commission will invest the money for you, but they'll play it safe. They don't want to lose your money, but it won't grow as fast as inflation. You can almost certainly do better by investing it conservatively yourself. And you're not done losing money yet. Number 9. Pay taxes on your winnings. That's right, even though the money's coming straight from the government, you get to give some of it back right away as taxes. You'll have to pay federal, state, and local taxes on that big pile of income. The lottery holds back just under 29% to cover that if you're a U.S. citizen, but might owe even more depending on where you live. So if you won that $10 million jackpot and took the lump sum, it already got knocked down to $6.1 million. Next, Uncle Sam and friends take their share. And you've got, let's see, a little under $4.5 million left. That's right, less than half of the jackpot that you actually get to keep. And don't even think about skipping out on those taxes. The government knows exactly how much money they gave you. But at least now, you get to spend your 10, I mean 6, I mean 4 million dollars. And once you start spending your money, your life is probably never going to be that simple again. Which brings us to our next unofficial rule. Number 8. Hire an accountant and an attorney. It's time to hire some people to help you out. Guess what? You can afford it now. Don't be stingy here. Unless your big dream for winning the lotto was to spend all your time doing paperwork. You need help managing your money. Want to hear a scary statistic? One in three lotto jackpot winners go bankrupt. You want an accountant because every big thing you spend money on is going to make your taxes more complicated. And you need an attorney because you're going to have legal problems. Sorry. In fact, you should really find a lawyer before you even collect your jackpot. But once you collect, you need to get ready to get sued. When people hear that you hit the jackpot, a lot of them are going to try to get something out of you. And you want a lawyer from a big national firm, not someone who's worked with your family or friends. Because it might be your family or friends who sue you. Take Bud Post. He won the Pennsylvania Lotto in 1988. Then his girlfriend, who was also his landlady, sued him, saying Post had agreed to split the jackpot with her. The judge cited against Post, and he had to give up a third of his $6 million prize. 
Our next rule is one you might not think of, but it's non-negotiable. Number 7. You have to claim your prize in the state you played in. Does this one sound obvious? Well, different states have different rules about collecting your prize. After you bought your winning ticket, you don't get to shop around for the state with the best rules. But when you hear about this next rule, you'll understand why you want to. Number 6. The state gets to share your identity. Obviously, you've got to tell the lottery commission who you are so they can give you the money. The lottery then turns around and tells the public your name and how much you won. Some states even publish where the winner lives. It makes sense that the states want to do this. It's great publicity for the lottery. It proves they're actually paying the lottery and not just keeping everyone's money or rigging it for the commissioner and all their friends. But it sucks for the winners. If it makes you nervous to imagine everyone in your state finding out you hit the Powerball jackpot, that's not just paranoia. Lottery winners are many times more likely to be victims of robbery, kidnapping, and even murder. Like Gregory Birch Jr. In 2016, he won a $400,000 prize, not even one of the really big ones. Only two months later, a group of armed robbers broke into his house and killed him. He's just one sad example. Lately, more and more states have realized that announcing a lottery winner's name puts a giant target on their back. Now, 16 states let lottery winners stay anonymous. Delaware, Georgia, Illinois, Kansas, Maryland, Minnesota, Mississippi, Montana, New Jersey, North Dakota, Ohio, South Carolina, Texas, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wyoming. For some of these states, winners only get to stay anonymous if the jackpot is big enough. Florida and Arizona have a weird rule. In those states, winners can stay anonymous, but only for 90 days. After the 90 days, the winner's identity is a public record. So basically, you get a 90-day head start on anyone coming after you. But what if you live in one of the other 32 states? Are you just out of luck? Well, there's one thing you can do. Number 5. If you want to stay anonymous, set up a trust. That fancy pants lawyer you hired is gonna be clutch. Because here's a little cheat. The law in most of these states says it's a public record who collects the prize money. But they don't say the prize money has to be collected by a human being. A trust is kind of a legal entity that handles money. You can have your lawyer set up a trust and then have the trust be the one who wins the lottery for you. In some states, this means the trust's name get made public and you remain anonymous. In other states, it's just an extra layer of protection. People can look up who owns the trust if they really want to know. And in California, unfortunately, this trick just isn't allowed. You might want to think twice about buying your ticket there. No matter what you do though, bad luck is going to find you. Which brings us to the next rule. Number 4. Get insurance. Get yourself some good umbrella insurance. No, that's not insurance in case your umbrella breaks. Umbrella insurance is liability insurance that kicks in where other insurance policies leave off. So, for example, if everyone on your block suddenly gets really clumsy and starts falling down in front of your house, and every personal injury attorney in town is beating on your door, your regular insurance will run out pretty fast. The extra insurance will keep people from bleeding you dry. That should go a long way to protecting you from people who want to take your money. But what about people you want to give your money to? Number 3. Decide how much to give away and stick to it. This is another rule that will keep you from losing all your money and all your friends. If you strike it big, you need to decide right away how much of the money you want to share. Will you give away 10%, 20%, 50%, 90? Whatever that number is, you'll want to tell it to that big shot attorney you hired. They can set up trusts and foundations to give the money to charity, help your friend's kids through college, or whatever else you want to do. What you can't do is just give money to people whenever you feel like it, because people around you are going to act like you have infinite money, and you're probably going to feel like it's infinite too. But it's not infinite, and you'll find that out the hard way, unless you follow the next rule. Number 2. Put up a safety net. The way to get set for life is to invest a big chunk of money and never, ever touch it. Wait, that doesn't sound right, but it's true. Remember that $4.5 million after tax payout we were imagining? You'd want to take, say, $2 million of that and invest it in something really boring, like an index fund 
or treasuries. That big pile of money will grow a few percent every year. You want to live off that extra and never touch the original pile. 6% a year isn't a crazy return, but 6% of $2 million is $120,000. That's a six-figure income. Most people have to work for that, but not you. But there's one more rule you have to keep in mind if you hit the jackpot. Number one, don't expect it to solve all your problems. Of course, having a huge pile of money can solve a lot of problems. Sometimes the problem is that you don't have enough money. Having more money is great for that. But as we've seen, winning the lottery can create new problems. All that money can put a strain on your relationships. It can bring out the worst in people. It can bring out the worst in you. You've got to be careful. We already saw that a third of lottery winners go bankrupt. Lottery winners are also a whole lot more likely to overdose on drugs, get convicted of drunk driving, get charged with a felony, or commit suicide. So you have to keep your eyes open. Don't forget the things in your life that are really important. Hitting the Powerball jackpot can put you on top of the world, but if you don't follow the rules, you can end up falling even lower than you started. Like the lottery winners in our next video, these are some of the people who managed to win millions and then lose absolutely everything. Check it out now.